Hey there, Method students. Uh, this is the last part of uh, section 13D. So in this section, we look at um, a couple of different ideas. The, the first one is this 95% probability interval, um, which is a, a common interpretation of standard deviation. So we saw before that standard deviation is a measure of, of spread, um, and we calculate it using the square root of the variance. Um, and there's this idea that for most random variables, approximately 95% of the distribution is within two standard deviations of the mean or within two standard deviations of the expected value. So this is often, it's, it's an approximation. It's not a um, concrete rule. It doesn't work for every distribution, but it, it does happen in a lot of cases that approximately 95% of a distribution will be within two standard deviations of the mean. So we could write that as saying, well, the probability that X lies within two standard deviations of the mean should be approximately equal to 0 0.95. Or this notation here has got it written as the probability that X is greater than the mean minus two times the standard deviation, but X is less than the mean plus two times the standard deviation, well, that probability should be approximately 0 0.95. Okay, so that, that notation there is just a kind of complex way of saying, um, like this number here is two standard deviations below the mean. This number here is two standard deviations above the mean. So this is saying the probability that X is in between those two values is going to be approximately 95%. Okay, so let's, let's have a look, a look at an example um, uh, using a, a sort of um, discrete uh, probability distribution table. So we've got a bank that's been engaged in a long-term survey with a number, number of people who use its automatic bank machine before 9 a.m. each day. The probability distribution X um, of X, the number of people who arrive at the machine before 9 a.m., is given in the following table. So according to this table, um, X can take values of 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. So before 9 a.m., there might be no people who use the machine, there might be one person, there might be two people, there might be three people, or there might be four people who use this machine before 9 a.m. And here are the associated probabilities. So, for example, the probability that nobody uses the machine before 9 a.m. on a particular day is 0 0.33. Okay, now we're kind of given some helpful information in this question so we don't have to work it out ourselves. The expected value um, of x is 1.12 and the variance is 1.1856. This then says find the probability that um, x is, and essentially this is just that notation from before saying that x is greater than um, the mean minus two standard deviations but less than the mean plus two standard deviations. So first thing, let's actually work out if we started from the mean and subtracted two standard deviations, um, what would that actually equal? And that would equal 1.12 minus two times the standard deviation. Now remember that the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So we're doing two times um, the square root of the variance, so 1.1856. Um, okay, and if we put that into our calculator, we will get, uh, and I did this one before, save a bit of time, I just got to remember where I wrote it. So we get three point, uh, sorry, no, that's the other one. We get negative 1.0577 and the rest. Okay, so that's the value that is two standard deviations below the mean. To get the value that is two standard deviations above the mean, we're just going to do the mean plus two times the standard deviation, which is 1.12 plus two times, remember that's the square root of the variance, so 1.1856. Right, and calculating all that gives us 3.2977. Okay, so. From that, we can say, well, this probability that we're being asked to find is really equal to the probability that x is greater than negative 1.05, but that x is less than 3.2977. Those, are, those values are values that X can't actually take, right? Remember that X can only take these values here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's a discrete variable. It can only take these values here. So saying that X is greater than, excuse my dog, saying X is greater than negative 1.05 is really just the equivalent in this particular case of saying that X is greater than or equal to 0, right? If X is greater than negative 0. 
uh, negative 1.05. Well, really, that just means the smallest value it can be is zero, and it can be zero. At the other end, saying that x is less than 3.29, well, that's not a value that x can take, but it's just saying that x is going to be three or less, right? Because um, 3.29 is kind of the, our upper limit, so that would include, that covers three um, and everything below it. So we could say that x is less than or equal to three. Okay, so essentially, this is just kind of converting these values, um, which are more like continuous values with these extended decimal points, back into the values that our discrete variable can actually take. All right, and if we wanted to work out that probability, the probability that x is between zero and three inclusive, well, two ways that we can do that. We can either add the probabilities for x equaling zero, one, two, and three. All right, so we can add all these together. Okay. Um, but probably the easiest way is actually to just take, well, it, we basically want all the probabilities except for this one. So let's just do one minus this probability here, all right? So two different ways of, of working it out, but we can go one minus the probability that x equaled four, which was one minus 0 0.05. And if you're working without a calculator, that's a much easier one to do. And that is equal to 0 0.95. So I said before it's an approximation. In this question, it's actually worked out to be very precise that the probability that x is between or, or sorry, within two standard deviations of the mean has turned out to be exactly 0 0.95. That's because this is kind of a made up example. In, real, in reality, it won't always equal 0 0.95, but the idea is that it'll usually be pretty close. Okay, um, last little section here, this is just on the mode and the median. Um, these are sort of less commonly um, required statistics, but you will sometimes be asked to find the mode or median of a discrete probability distribution. Um, and just remember that, you know, from what you've learned in, I don't know, year seven, eight, nine statistics, mode is just the most common value. Median is when you line everything up in order, the median is what, what appears in the center. Um, and so when you think about that and, and kind of apply it to probability distributions, well, the mode is just the thing that's most likely to occur. So the mode of a discrete probability distribution is the outcome whose probability is the highest, right? That's actually nice and easy. The median of a discrete probability distribution, um, this can be found by actually just accumulating or adding together the probabilities in the table until the total probability reaches 0 0.5, right? So wherever you kind of get to a, a summed probability of 0 0.5, that's where you've kind of, you've reached halfway through the distribution and the value of X at which the total probability passes 0 0.5, that will be the median, okay? So, Let's, let's kind of apply that in this example. So the discrete random variable X has a probability distribution as shown. So we're getting very used to these tables um, from lots of different questions that we're doing. Find the mode of X, right? So we're just looking for which value of X, which possible outcome has the highest probability. And that's clearly that X equals zero. So the mode of X, um, we're gonna say the mode of X is zero. Okay, because that's the one that's got the highest probability. That's the outcome that's most likely to occur. So if we, you know, did this, whatever this um, trial is, if we ran it, you know, 100 times, the one that's most likely to occur most often is x equaling zero. Find the median of x. Well, the median of x, we said, well, we can actually just start from, you can actually start from either end, probably makes most sense to start from the start, and you just add the probabilities together until you get to, or until you get it beyond 0 0.5. So if we kind of add these, add these two probabilities together here, the 0.4 and the, uh, sorry, yeah, the 0.4 and the 0.2, we get to a total of 0 0.6. Now, if we kept going, our total gets to 0 0.9 and one, but the key point really was we wanted to work out where did it tick over 0 0.5, right? And clearly that happened in, in this section here, okay? So another way to think of this, and you wouldn't do this every single time, but if you imagine that like this was actually, these probabilities were obtained from a list of 10 numbers, well, in order, the numbers would be 0, 0, 0, 0, one, one, two, 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 and three, right? That would be a, that would be a, a list of numbers that gives you this distribution. Um, and if you were gonna do it that way and you lined them all up and you went, well, where's the, where's the middle, middle value? Well, one, two, three, four, five, median would be there because that gives me five numbers below, five numbers above, and quite clearly the median there is one. We've just done the equivalent of that, but using the probabilities by adding it up until we get to 0 0.5 and the where we get to 0 0.5 is, is sort of in this um, interval here where x equals one. So the median of x is equal to one. So not as common that you'll have to find the mode or the median, but it is possible. Um, and if you need to, then 
that's how you do it.